This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This evening's special guest, Steve Woodward, Oregonian Steve. Hi there, Cami. And in our studio audience tonight, we have A. Hockley. Hello. And Betsy Wim. Hi there. What would you say, Steve? If I said we should not keep Portland weird. Uh, I would say you are absolutely wrong. We have to keep Portland weird. Why? If we don't, who will? Mm, that's a very good point. Why is it so important that Portland be weird? Oh, that's a trick question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> you know, they're, the world's really quite normal. And, um, and there's just, there's too much normality in the world Mm -hmm. and somebody really needs to lead the way to weirdness. And, um, and if it isn't Portland, then nobody else will do it. It's true. You know, Austin started, but it's just not weird enough anymore. They didn't have a follow through. Did they start it? it? As I understand it, Austin was the first to, uh, launch the keep Austin weird. Right, right. Yeah. And now it's spread all across the country. Um, the problem being that actually none of those other cities are exactly. weird. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They, they may be odd, but they're not weird, yeah. which is a whole, whole level above that. And, uh, you know, Austin is a great town, but weird? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, Portland, but, definitely weird. Yeah. Portland yeah. is very weird. And yeah. I love Portland. Like naked bike people. And naked. shirt cocking. Well, that was Burning Man. That, yeah, that was, I know. That but we get to Black talk Rock. about shit-cocking in Portland. I'm <laughs> no. sure someone's yeah. done No, we, we well, don't. No. <laughs> people at least know what you're talking about. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. People understand. Yeah, try mentioning that in Ogden, Utah. Oh, no. I would probably be burned or something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, don't think, I don't think I'm even allowed in Utah. Yeah, I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I don't. So, I have a question. I have a valid question. And I thought of it during the break. You announced on the 30-minute-ish tech kind of episode of Strange Love that mm-hmm. you were leaving the Oregonian. Yes. You were taking the generous buyout, and you were going your own way. I am. What's going to happen to Oregonian Steve? I'm still going to be Oregonian Steve, because I'm an Oregonian. Okay. I'm okay. just not the Oregonian. It'll have just a different meaning. I'll, uh, I'll be an Oregonian Steve rather than the Oregonian Steve. Okay. Yes, because there's lots of Steves in Oregon. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can't give that trademark up because no. nobody else would recognize me. It's a good name. Yeah. They'd all be like Steve. Who's yeah. Steve guy. So other than um, running around chasing naked people on your bike with a camera like a perv um, <laughs> for the Oregonian, uh, what else do you like to do? <laughs> what? Uh, actually, that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much made a life, uh, yeah. If uh, pursuit of that, right? So I just I go from city to city, uh, <laughs> chasing naked people. Well, I could see um, that. Yeah, a- actually, I don't. That was the <laughs> the one and only time I've ever done. Oh, the that. one time, the only naked the, event. So you say? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But I'm looking forward to doing it again sometime in the future. Yeah, but as a professional. But you do as a professional in boxers again. Uh, in boxers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know. See, we don't even have to ask him what kind of underwear he wears like we do with some of our guests. Because he's already said, I wear boxers and I ride my bicycle. Yeah. I chase naked people. That's right. So, uh, other than that, you participate in other weird type activities, correct? Well, I I love... Weird Portland type activities. I love uh, blogging, Mm -hmm. although I haven't done it for a year. A Mm. year, almost, I think it was... Cami Chaos caught me. Yeah, I think it's a year on October 16th. Okay, she really... It was a teen. You really caught me on that. Yeah. Um, 
it's just really interesting to go to weird events here. In fact, I think Multnomah County Library is holding a Keep Portland Weird Day, and they've invited... Naked a, book reading, perhaps? <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be naked. Okay. Um, I think they That's may good, because no one wants to see that in the library. No, no. I mean, they may be wearing fake beards or... Wings. Uh, mm-hmm. Wigs, tattoos. Uh, the tattooed people, are, they're weird. They're very weird. Um, actually, it's... I think somebody's blog once uh, said recently that uh, they were under the impression that there's not a single tattoo artist in Portland who's unemployed. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't surprise me because all the, the you've got the good tattoo artists that go to the people that have been getting tattooed for a long time and know what they want, and then right. you've got all the guys with flash on the wall that you know get all the eighteen year olds that are running in to get their first tattoo. Right, there's, so exciting. There's a there's a tattoo artist for everybody in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have one. Yeah? I wonder. I'm just going to... There's five people you in know, the you, room. You could get one. I mean, you know, if you're you know leaving the Oregon. I'm you know, just that wondering. It could be the first part of your kind I, of official I, I, retirement from the newspaper, right? Uh, I, I thought about getting one of those get the big O. That, uh, oh, the big O. That'd be a good one. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I'll have I'm to curious. think about where to put that. <laughs> How many people in this room have a tattoo? Aaron? I don't Aaron have any West. tattoos, although I, I must say I was disappointed that Steve had a perfectly good opportunity to put on a tattoo a couple weeks ago. Oh. Yeah, Steve. And he didn't. He, he could have gone head-to-head with Verso in the, the WordPress tattoo. He could have. Who knows? He might have beat Verso because there were no other contenders for best tattoo at WordCamp. No, I don't, I don't know. Not. I hear somebody <laughs> must have been a close second. Damn it. Betsy? I have a now wearing off WordPress tattoo on my ankle. Oh. So, yeah. Temporary, though. I'm the only tattooed person in the room. I was told by my children that I wasn't allowed to get a tattoo. My son told me, Mom, you'll get blood poisoning and die. Now, at the time, he still liked me, so he thought that was a negative. Now, yeah. he might encourage me. Yeah. If you go to the right tattoo artist, not going to happen. Um, but, you know, that's okay. They, maybe he's just waiting. Maybe he wants to get lots of tattoos and scare you with them, and so he doesn't want you to be able to, you know, bond with him over a tattoo. He's already decided that if I think that anything is cool, I have decoolified it, and uh-huh. it can't possibly be cool for him. That makes sense. I'm going to have a lot of fun in the yeah. years ahead. <laughs> yes, you are. I enjoy embarrassing my kids, except they just, they don't seem to be embarrassable. Maybe it's because they know you enjoy it. Probably. They didn't even flinch when I told them that I had started taking hip-hop lessons. Hip-hop lessons? <laughs> yeah, that was about three years ago. I signed up at uh, Vega Dance Lab for hip-hop lessons because uh, my doctor told me that I needed to get my cholesterol down. Hip-hop lessons, okay. And okay. I hate running. Mm-hmm. Running I, That's really blah. a bad thing in this So you're MC Steve now, not Oregonian Steve. MC Steve, yeah. MC Oregonian Steve. In the house. Yeah, yeah. In the his house? Yep. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was quite an experience. I, uh, I was kind of, I was actually so nervous that I was shaking, uh, but I swore that I would do this because I think hip hop looks so cool. Mm hmm. Um, so I'm glad you do. <laughs> I, so I go in there and, uh, Let's see, the, uh, who was it, Edie, Evie, uh, the owner of the studio, said, oh yeah, the hip-hop lesson's starting. I said, is there anywhere to like change into my hip-hop, you know, my, my sweats? And she said, yeah, just go upstairs and uh, the striptease, and go behind the striptease class and the <laughs> bathroom's there, and you can change in there. It's all about the nudity with you, isn't it, Steve? Well, you know, they were all wearing clothes. I was oh. really scared. Was it like a pole uh, dancing class? I can't quite describe it. I was trying not to look. Uh, but it's okay. You have your card. I am a reporter. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's all okay. And I thought I would do a first person story on that later, but uh, it never came to pass. There we go. Yeah. So, um, so other activities like Mondo Croquet, perhaps, and other I, types of activities. I did 
filmed some Mondo Croquet. I didn't mm-hmm. actually play myself, although I'm looking forward to perhaps doing that at some point. And Mondo Croquet is for is, those, the uninitiated. Yes. Uh, I can't believe that there are uninitiated out there, but for the three of you who've never mm-hmm. heard of it, mm. it's playing um, croquet with bowling balls and sledgehammers. In fancy costumes. In fancy costumes, like Mad Hatter costumes mm-hmm. and... Uh, evening gowns, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes place mm, what, once a year in the yeah. North Parks Park Blocks and uh, sponsored by the Portland Cacophony Society primarily, although lots of people show up. Mm-hmm. That's I right. think it's one of their more tame, le- they, less racy yes, events. Yes. Yeah, not yeah, tame, but less I, racy. From what I understand. And yeah. they're... Uh, they're they're one of the groups that really tries to keep Portland weird. I love them. Yes. They're doing a good job. Now, do you do uh, SantaCon? Do you do the Santa? You know, I have not, um, but I really want to now. I don't have my Santa suit yet. I've never been to SantaCon. Doctor Norrell's been wanting to go been for a long time for several, several, so several years. So if you, you'll you go have... to SantaCon this year, I'll go. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you dress up like Santa. Okay. Okay. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that, Doctor Normal? Yeah, yeah. I okay. I'm you're up for it. Good. Yeah, you're up for yeah. it. Okay, okay. Yeah. We just need the stinky costume. Mm-hmm. I won't wear a stinky costume. You aren't supposed to wash them. Yeah. So it, it, It'll it, be it won't be stinky new. the first year. Correct. It'll be stinky later It'll after st- someone spills something on it. Or yeah. Blah. By the twentieth year, it will stand by itself in the corner. What kind of Santa would you be? Um. I didn't know there were different kinds. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got your traditional Santa, then you've got your, like, homeless Santa, and then you've got your Elvis Santa, and then you've got your bimbo Santa. Hmm. I'll I'll give you one. Perv Santa chasing naked bikers, (laughs) posing as a reporter. No. No? That doesn't work for you? (laughs) No. I'll have to, you know, to... To kind of kind of change my image here, let's just say I was uh, I was an obsessive chess player uh, in high school. But it's hard news. Hard okay. news. Right. Well, oh no, that that was thank you, but I need yeah. the drum. The, <laughs> thank you. Here I'm a drummer. I don't have my own rim shot. That's yeah. Very, okay. Very sad. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. So a chess player. Uh, yes, I was. I played morning, noon, and night for. Mm-hmm. Many years. Wow. And then I just decided that was enough. Right. Enough's enough. And you don't play chess at all anymore? No, it just takes too much time. Uh Mm. I ran out of time. It's like, uh, you know, four hours for a game. So you can't just sit down and play a quick game of chess with somebody? No. Yeah, because you're thinking this. It's, uh, yeah, I actually think about my moves, and that's Uh pretty dangerous. That pretty much eliminates it for me. Uh Mm-hmm. Yeah, thinking in your spare time is just no good. Yeah. And I actually do mean that to a certain extent. That, that At some point you have to stop thinking and, and unwind. Yeah, just watch mindless TV or yeah. whatever. Watch uh, your lava lamp over there. Yes. I don't know. If, yeah. Is that on camera? I can never. No, it's not. No, oh, that's too bad. It should yeah. be. It's very relaxing. Maybe we'll just do an episode of Strange Love where we concentrate on our soothing lava lamp. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe at, at uh, New Year's Eve when like TV shows play oh, that, that fireplace mm-hmm. video, mm-hmm. you we can, can do the lava. lava lamp. Yeah. Just play some of Dr. Normal's music, show the lava lamp. Yeah. And you can say, groovy. Groovy, baby. Well, as tradition on After Hours, this is the time in the show where we talk about what we're drinking tonight. Cammy? Like? Cammy's drinking a piñosa. Oh, Steve, I am you... drinking a pumpkin ale. Let me hold that up. That is a... What the heck is this? Uh, American's <laughs> original... America's original pumpkin ale. Buffalo Bills Brewery. Isn't oh. that in Colorado? Does it taste like pumpkins? I thought it said something about... Uh, brewed and bottled by Pyramid Breweries in Seattle, Washington. Oh, really? Yeah. Does it yeah. taste like pumpkin? Pyramid. Anybody? Anybody? In Portland? Yeah, kind it, of. It does yeah. have a pumpkin taste to it. Does it have like a cinnamon? 
Or just pumpkin-y? Just mostly pumpkin-y. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I covered, uh, wrote a story about giant pumpkin growers once. Did you? I mean, the growers weren't giant, but the pumpkins were. <laughs> and How big was the biggest pumpkin? It was about, I'm guessing, 1,600 pounds. I, I can't quite remember. Man, what do you do with a pumpkin that big? You take it to Half Moon Bay, California, and you enter it in a contest with other giant pumpkins. Yeah, yeah, but aside from like, look how big my pumpkin is. Well, then you take it to Lloyd Center and you carve it. Oh, and, and okay. You carve it. Yeah, and you put lights inside of it, and uh, you turn little kids into squealing uh, little fans yeah. of giant pumpkins. Wow, because I would guess that a giant pumpkin would not make good pumpkin pie. Or have good pumpkin seeds. I found the bigger the pumpkin, generally, the the worse the seed. Another thing you can do with it, as I recall, is you can turn it into a coach. Oh, you could do that. Yeah, it's been done. Or if you were Peter Peter okay, Pumpkin Eater, you could things? put your wife in it. it These is. are really big, like big enough for s- for big. your studio. Not really. Uh, no, actually, it's not quite that big. It's um, like the size of our couch. Somebody could bigger. Yeah, get uh, in it. Huh? It's about couch size. Yeah. Wow. Oh, those are big pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, just one of the many things that uh, I'm starting to remember I've covered over the years. Hey, this is seasonally appropriate. It's Nude yeah. bikers and big pumpkins and yes. mondo croquet. Do you notice and, a theme here, Steve? And failing internet. Uh, they're companies. all weird. <laughs> So did you cover any other Cacophony Society event, events? Uh, the I've only really done one Cacophony, direct Cacophony Society mm-hmm. uh, event, and, and that was, um, oh gosh, what did they call it? They, uh, they pretended that they were roping off uh, areas within public parks as, oh to check for radiation yeah and they mm-hmm. got out their machines oh, and they we, checked we and were put up do that one yeah yeah but it was kind of wasn't that the one that um we were actually going to do it and then it was right after 9 11 and they were like mm, we were kind of like yeah we're not going to participate in that one right now everyone's a little yeah, freaked out maybe it was i'm, I'm yeah. trying to remember the date it was a, actually a yeah i had talked to a few of the organizers and we had had been swapping emails about ideas for that people did freak out yeah 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 Yeah. especially a cop on a bicycle (laughs) yeah i think we have some questions from the studio audience or maybe from the chat room actually we thought you wanted to know what we were drinking too oh we do want to know what you're drinking too we thought you didn't care no betsy we we do care betsy what are you drinking (laughs) i am drinking a glass of very nice italian white wine thank you very much actually that's um yeah what was that sicilian actually it's very nice yes it's really nice thank you nice and flinty yes we do have some people from the chat room though who who are giving us all the one other things you can do with pumpkins oh wait let's let aaron tell us we will but i think this one is really intriguing you can roll around while naked in a pumpkin apparently Ew. According to Laudak, I really would inside try the that. pumpkin or in I, like pumpkin stuff because pumpkin. You know, I the, just didn't ask. Pumpkin guts is actually uh, they're really, it's really good for your skin. Yeah, yeah. I'll be right over with my notebook. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and let me pass this to Aaron. Yeah, now. JP, you just Aaron wait right there with your naked some. pumpkin rolling, and we'll send someone over to cover you. Well, even more disturbing than his naked pumpkin rolling is the fact that Mr. Tarosi made a comment about it's not the size of your pumpkin, it's the motion in the ocean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or something like that. So this I was also drinking a pumpkin ale. This is why we only let Rick in the chat room. <laughs> we don't actually let him in the basement anymore. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, drink that pumpkin ale and just uh, take your show. <laughs> just the whole subject of pumpkins, right? Giant pumpkins and pumpkin ale. Who so would have known? <laughs> who is your, this brings up a good question, who is your Halloween night guest on Strange Love Live? It is a Friday night this year. Uh, we are working on, we are currently working on ideas for the Halloween show. Okay. We are not uh, yet announcing anything except for that our guest will be spooky. That's right. We're working on it. Spooky guest. I want to know, because we're talking about Halloween, does anyone... I know two people in this room are dressing up for Halloween. Is anyone else dressing up for Halloween? Well, that's kind of a personal question, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to ask it anyway. No. No. Aaron? Betsy? 
I no longer have any bridesmaid dresses, so I can't use them for Halloween costumes anymore. How about Steve. Halloween for you, Steve? You know, I never dress up for Halloween, which is... Oh. I dress up for just about any other occasion, but not for Halloween. Oh, I see. I see. So it's... it's Purple it's, wigs, it's not fezzes. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like Belgian fez. Tommy helmets. There you go. So it's like Halloween. It's like, oh, that's that's for the the amateurs, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you never want to do things on the day that people expect you to do exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Halloween is my favorite holiday because I revel in the other people actually letting go for once and actually being different. It, You know, that's one thing about Portland uh, also that's weird is that Halloween is a huge deal here. It is. Yeah. I Part mean, of the reason I love it here. Yeah. Um, so... I ride TriMet. It's like Halloween all year. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. And, and I'm still going to dress up for Halloween. And currently the reason that I'm so excited about dressing up for Halloween is our daughter is still at the age where she thinks it's cool to dress up uh, as a family unit and mm-hmm. be, you know, in, in like a costume. This gets expensive. It does get expensive, but it's so it's, it's a great effect. Yeah, and I wish uh, I was always wishing she'd keep the Batman theme because I blew a lot of money on yeah. that costume. Yeah, I mean the full Batman cowl. One year he was stuff. Batman, and and we were both Batgirl. I was Batmom. Wow, but yeah. it was yeah, not really a mom. We were in the costume. paper. We were. We Our were. Picture was not oh, the Oregonian. Okay. We were in the cell with B. The cell with B. Yeah, that's not, very cool. Not the first and not the last time either. No, I know. I'm sure there will be more future opportunities. <laughs> And then last year we were we were all vampires. That was our first foray into the the horror genre with her. We were I almost cried. I was so proud. Really? Yeah, uh-huh. when she wanted to be a vampire. Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. I was so proud. Like Buffy. Yeah, only not so much. But not. Yeah. She didn't want to kill yeah. the vampire. She wanted to be one that year. Oh, be the vampire. Yeah. The, I never f- will never forget the year my daughter wanted to be cheese. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What kind yeah. of cheese was she? Well, uh, she was various kinds of cheese. Mm-hmm. I, I really struggled with how to make her into cheese. So we just happened to have uh, a cheese head from uh, like the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I made a styrofoam thing that like clipped around her waist with styrofoam huh. cheese slices and stuff and mm. a sign that said cut the cheese and uh why all, cheese do you know i you know i never it just really found out kind of popped in her head thinking and i would like to be cheese that was one thing that uh, probably explained some later behavior in mm-hmm. life <laughs> and of course you probably know as well as we do a personal friend of ours broccoli man Correct. Broccoli man, broccoli indeed. Man. Hi, indeed, man. I. That was Good one of my of first the... uh, articles ever mm-hmm. uh, as a fe- as a living oh, feature write writer. That? I wrote about his eyeball museum. I yes. saw that article. Yes. I read that article. You did. Mm-hmm. So actually, you knew about me before you knew. I just didn't pay attention to the name. Yeah. Yeah, I was so impressed, and I just I don't remember how I found him mm-hmm. on you know on the internets. I yeah. think. Um, and he was in one of the pipes mm-hmm. there, the Eyeball Museum. Mm-hmm. And I, as soon as I found out he was in Beaverton or wherever he lives, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew I had to go there. So that and that was then I found out he was broccoli man. He's a very also. that's right, very cool vegetable loving kind of guy. Yeah, he is. But certain kinds of vegetables. Yes. Not any vegetable. Not any vegetable. Yeah. He makes uh, short films now. Little. He makes not just short films. He. Makes films right. now as well. Oh, he has it? a video somewhere mm-hmm. of me and someone else in the Cacos doing a backup with him singing at the Matador, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never seen the video, though. I don't, It's I'll probably to, on YouTube. I'll have to trade him. Either I don't know that, if he kept it or someone shot the video. I mm-hmm. don't know. Okay. Well, it may be uh, in one of those film festivals at uh, mm-hmm. Hollywood, too. Well, we have several cacophony videos that we've done ourselves mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that have never been posted or seen the light of day never and they will be seen. at some point oh. one of which is the very rough and tumble cami chaos as the first 
queen of white princess. trash? I think it was a princess. No, you were the queen. Seriously? Princess. You were? Princess. The white first. trash princess. Yes. In the pageant? Yes. Yeah. Oh You're looking gosh. at the former Miss White Trash Princess. Although even some I of the cacos, starstruck. even a few of the, our friends who were, were a little cacos disturbed by the had performance. actually watched my video and said, that was a little disturbing because I was daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a little slightly disturbing. <laughs> it really was. We had a close oh relationship. <laughs> yeah, obviously. I get a little creeped out just hearing about it. So, yeah, maybe we can it's, move along. So there's no video evidence. Of that. Oh, no, there's no, there plenty is. of that, video that, evidence. That is uh, loose on the internet anywhere. No, Not it, it hasn't internet. been posted it's, yet. Okay. But it, it, okay, it's locked in a safe. But those people who would like to sponsor Strange Love Live <laughs> and uh, come up with some cash, I'd be more than happy to put that in the premium feed or whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think Aaron Hockley has been chomping at the bit to have the microphone turned on. Oh, it's... It's a bit out of context at the moment, but there was all this <laughs> everything. Is, there was all apparently. this vegetable talk, and I just really thought we needed to mention bacon because we hadn't done that yet tonight. Oh, Dear Lord, bacon man. let's talk about some real bacon because bacon. last week the show, yes, I had to eat soy bacon. We had soy bacon. That's right. Yeah, you had really. It was soy was it? bacon. I Actually, G. Walter was in the chat room, and I believe he's somewhere lost in the Midwest at this point. Hi, G. Walter. Mm. Thank you for bringing the Not soy sure. bacon. It just wasn't my thing. Yeah, was, it, Gary's, right. Gary has gone to bed because yes. he's in Nebraska where it's, you know, like a whole nother day or something. Two yes, hours so. later. Yeah. But yeah, you had, you've had like two vegetarians in a row, I think, prior to this episode. So we should have had something. Are you a vegetarian, Steve? I am not. My daughter is. Um, but because I'm watching my cholesterol and I have slipped on my hip hop lessons mm-hmm. <laughs> uh i'm eating turkey bacon right now i don't eat i the like real turkey thing. bacon i enjoy Tur- turkey yeah, bacon. yeah yeah it's it's close enough that you can be faked out yeah it's you, can, you know way better than soy bacon it was all right it kind of had the taste and everything it was all right it, okay you know i don't know i'm not afraid to be honest i don't like soy bacon wow you heard it here first <laughs> So um, I like soy sausage, though. So being the yeah. sleuth reporter that you are, mm-hmm. I mean, do you hang out at those restaurants and bars? Do you have like the, the you know, chasing the story? I mean, is, or is, or do you just pretty much go home every night and cook um, dinner and <laughs> you know, I, you like to go I, out. I guess I do feel like I'm on duty all the time, but actually, really? no, I don't sleuth around. Um, I pretty much declare who I am and yeah. Uh, you're not just sitting there in the You in don't the have booth like one of those little button you know, cameras? The little no, sometimes I overhear things, and that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, really? I can't think of any specific instances I mean, right do you, now, do you all have a hangout? You know, there's that place where all the reporters go and hang out for... Oh, like in the TV shows. Yeah, like no. in the TV shows, because mm-hmm. I know those are real. Everything yeah. I know about reporters and... Politics and everything yeah. about life comes from TV. It's, it's all true. Exactly. Um, no, actually, modern reporters are really boring people. Um, Sigh. Yeah, especially in Portland, which is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. That's weird, too. That is weird. That's weird that we all go home to our families and, uh, you know, act normal instead of hanging out at Kelly's Olympian. And I used to love Kelly's. Really? So that's it's where, that's where so the breakneck anymore. Betty's uh, roller derby. The roller derby. Out. Now? Yeah. Like right at this instant? Well, no, I well, mean nowadays. Nowadays. Yeah, nowadays. I, I think nowadays. Before, they, before it was purchased and changed, I, I used to hang out I think so. There. At least that's where I conducted one of my interviews when mm-hmm. I was writing about. I did a piece on the roller derby um, league when it first got started. Mm-hmm. So I forget. I think it was Mad... Magnet, Magnet Mad Adam, mm-hmm. who I interviewed there, and she had a tattooed much like yours. Only it was, uh, she is a science tutor, and it was of the, um, oh man, I forget what it's called, but it's when uh, adenos- adenosine triphosphate loses a hydrogen atom mm-hmm. uh, and is converted into energy. Oh, in a that's, plant cell, um, and she had a tattoo of that process that's on a, her back. Yeah, with wow. chlorophyll, chlorophyll and um, exactly. respiration, and um, God, what's the converse of that? You should know this. this. 
kissing me off. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I know Can, exactly. can you help us out here? No. It's the conversion okay. with the carbon and the, the yeah, oxygen. Exactly. Yeah. Scientific yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly. Man, I do not have the back answer. To normal. Ah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So you who know, humans live with dinosaurs at the same time. I just wanted to insert that since really? we're on the science. Humans yeah. and dinosaurs. And you say you were together. the science reporter in Kansas City, correct? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. where I found that out. Yeah, exactly. Now, were they were were they, were they the ones that, that threw out the the, the evolution books? Was no, that Kansas? was in Kansas. That was in Kansas. Kansas City yeah. is actually in Missouri. Missouri. I just learned something about geography. You didn't know that. Although there wait, is wait, another, no, no, there, no, no. there is a oh, smaller, there is another Kansas City which yeah. is across the state line in Kansas. Yeah. But when people say Kansas City, they aren't yeah. talking about that Kansas City. Right, 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 right. Just like when people talk about Portland, they're not talking about Portland, Maine. Yeah. Oh. So I, Yuck. I have a... Um, <laughs> Sorry, that was not really fair. Comparison. So without using names, can you give us a scenario other than the current one that you're in right this moment where somebody you interviewed or you were talking to was just a big, complete asshole and you couldn't wait <laughs> to get out of there? Well, he's oh not boy. interviewing us. We're we're interviewing him. I know, but I'm just saying present company accepted. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Boy, I'm trying to think of. I mean, there had to have been. I mean, in all the years, there had to be. You know, someone that you were just like, what a douchebag. <laughs> you know, no. just like. Well, it's strange. I don't remember having that virulent a reaction to anyone. Really? Although there was one guy I did interview who was a con artist and. I spent six hours really? with him where he was explaining all the machinations at, uh, of his business operations. And I was, by the end of that six hours, I, did, I knew less than I did when I went in. Really? It's like watching yeah. The Spanish Prisoner. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, David Maybe. Mamet turned mm-hmm. that into a writing career, mm-hmm. hanging out with con artists, right? Wow. Yeah, I do you know? have a future. <laughs> <laughs> but he found them, I mean, the interesting thing is, you know, when he got into that, he found them completely fascinating. Yeah. Right? These car sharks and con artists and started oh. writing plays. And just, well, then, he was, and like, yeah. Thought yeah. It was yeah. Because of his world. movies, he's given at least one con artist a career as an actor. Right, yeah. yeah. Probably Rick, actually a couple. Well, at least what I was just thinking of Ricky Jay in particular. Yeah, a few yeah. of them. Hmm. So, so, so con artists, um, p- p- politicians, though, I mean, there's got to be. You know, that's w- one thing that I avoid like crazy is covering politics. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, Aaron's so, bursting at the seams here. So the chat room's operating on about a 90-second delay from sure. real time. So they just got the comment. Hello, chat room. They just got Dr. Normal's question about, you know, the person you interviewed. And so immediately Rick chimes in, me, the Twitter interview. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it had to have been the Twitterverse. I mean, what a bunch of... Yeah, you know, Rick, I thought he was a nice guy going in. <laughs> and, no. uh, you know, you find out Actually, about Actually, it was people. Holotl, Trust me. That's the guy. Oh, did oh he, yeah. Did he Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm not was... allowed to pronounce it the way I pronounce it into the microphone. I get in trouble every time I do it. <laughs> I could do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You aren't, you yeah. Makes you spit into he the microphone. He says hi, by the way. <laughs> hi, Nate. <laughs> hey, Nate. <laughs> yeah. He was, it was interesting because I met um, Rick over at Backspace. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nate was sitting over at one table mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Um, Bram Patoyo and uh, Catherine Gray came in, and they were sitting across from us. I had never met these people before, and Rick's twittering back and forth with them about mm-hmm. the interview, and I had no idea he was doing it at the time. So, so did you notice the growing crowd around you suddenly when it was like, hi, I'm a reporter from the Oregonian. I'm doing something on Twitter. All of a sudden, 25 people are sitting around you, and you're like, ooh, well, interview me, interview me. Actually, I'm on Rick, Twitter. Rick had tweeted earlier that he was on his way over to Backspace to be interviewed by me. So apparently the word was out. Had you met Rick Twitter? prior to that? No. No. Twitter people no, aren't shy. No. No, they it's aren't. It's not the shyest group. No. No, absolutely not. Which is what's charming about them. Exactly. So, I'm curious. Um, I know you asked me about doing the Twitter interview with me, and I kind of I politely declined and pointed you to a few other people. Okay, oh, yeah. he's shy. That's right. He's the one You're guy. the one who turned me down. 
Yeah. All the rest are not. Damn that Aaron so, Hockley. Okay. So that kind of goes to my question. Where, how many people had you approached before Rick agreed? Because uh, Rick is Just a ham. You. He likes attention. Before you... I believe I referred you to... I thought Josh Bancroft would be good as well, and you mentioned that you'd already interviewed him as right. you know the Uber geek, like we talked about on the earlier episode. Right. So, but no, I was out there looking at who had the most tweets, and I decided, and then I there were about half a dozen people. Um, you were among them, one of the highest. Mm-hmm. So that's why I called you. Uh, didn't call Josh, and I didn't call um, Hajime. Mm, who has right. like 20,000 tweets or did at the time, probably has 50,000 now. Um, so you were the first person I called. Ah, oh, I, I feel special. Yeah. There you go. Do you feel like and a th- jerk too? Because you just blew the guy off. I, I didn't just blow him <laughs> off. I... No, he blew me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, Let's oh, face it. Hello, yeah, the, I'm Aaron nice Hockley. Let's Aaron go. Hockley Cruise. Photography. I'm way too yeah, important I, to be I, doing this. I just clicked that report spam button in my email box. <laughs> yeah. and that was with the so, what? The or I don't who? know what that is. Yeah. I'm from I Vancouver. Live in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> we have Sudafed in Vancouver. Maybe that's your problem. <laughs> I need some right now. <laughs> Not to make meth with, just because he has a stuffy nose, okay? Yeah. So how many podcasts have you been doing uh, these days? Any podcasts at all? Any podcasts, as in video podcasts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have done three or four, something like that, but not for a year Uh because uh, they've just been too time-consuming. But I'm going to start that up again. Oh, cool. uh, After... After I leave the Oregonian, and you post these up to YouTube or just or uh, they're both. I have a YouTube channel, uh-huh. and I also uh, post them on my WordPress blog. Keep, Keep Portland, Portland weird. weird. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Dot WordPress dot com, and um, I'm I plan to do a special zombie issue um, when I come back when I make my comeback. So excited about seeing the zombie issue. There has been so much zombie news in the last year. I just, I can't wait to get at it. You know, there's a lot to report. So after you leave the Oregonian, you're essentially going to put together the Portland equivalent of the weekly world news? Is what you're saying? Or Well... (laughs) The online video equivalent. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you'll see me. uh, I like to wear costumes, so... Mm -hmm. I wear funny wigs and the last Groucho one? disguises. Fantastic purple wig. Thank you very much. You know that you know where that wig came from? Where? From Yahoo. It was in a press kit. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember why Yahoo would have sent me a purple I, wig. I can't think of a reason. <laughs> no, no. My colleague got um, I believe a green wig in her press kit. Wow. Yeah. Well if you ever need to like borrow a a pink beehive you just let me know really yeah i i can't tell you how excited i am by that (laughs) i have a couple crazy wigs up my sleeve wow okay okay i i love you know weird hats and things like that you know who wears weird hats have you ever seen that have you seen the cram namlock mark coleman's oh he i see by your reaction that you have not no yeah Yeah, you need uh, oh, Cram Namlock, okay. Mark Coleman, he's a photographer, yeah. and he does a show. He's in the chat room. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. Um, and it's at the Photo Guru Show where he teaches people to be better photographers, not to be guacs, as he puts it. Guacs. Okay. A guy or a girl with a camera. Oh, okay. And and he does this crazy, crazy character, Cram Namlock. He was on the show a couple weeks ago, and he wears insane hats and funky sunglasses. And talks to people like he took a hip hop class or two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> should, oh yeah, you should check it out sometime. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. How weird! I need to go weird. back in the uh, archives and look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He talks about being weird a lot, actually. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, he sounds like he's right up my alley. Oh yes, he. he I think sounds he'd like really I need to interview show. him. You should interview there you him. Go. You definitely, definitely yeah. should. You should make that a priority before you leave. Because, you know, he's ingrained in the Portland tech yeah. community as well. 
you know, I'm not writing any stories though before I leave. No, they well, have me reassigned to doing things, hmm. other things. So, are you excited? I am chomping at the bit. Okay, I, I can't wait to uh, get started on whatever the next thing is. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's going to be online. I, I have that question. What what other things do they have you assigned to do? If I told you, Betsy, I would have to kill you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I don't want anyone no. killed in my Kansas business. City oh, no, style. No, no, no. Oh, I'm I would scared. have to have you killed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I can I can talk a little bit okay. about this. Um, I haven't worked out all the details yet. I've got a ton of different things. I'll just throw out some examples. Like this morning in the shower, I was thinking about the economic crisis, as everyone does in the shower, and thinking that there is no Oregon blog that's kind of described or helping people understand it, the consequences, uh, what it means for them. Uh, talking to the economists around the state. And I thought, well, what an opportunity to put together, to aggregate some links and to do some interviews and uh, and maybe attract some financial planner advertising and maybe some banks who are desperate for new customers right now. Mm. Yeah. Solvent ones. And I have a feeling it's an evergreen idea. Yeah. I think that there's going to be well, plenty of attention. The, the one I really want to do is uh, I'm going to apply for a night news challenge uh, grant on this one because there's probably no revenue potential for it. But I love the idea of this total interaction with readers that it, you really can't get with a newspaper. Um, so I'd like to do a site where readers actually, or the public, makes the assignments and you assign, they tell you what they want you to investigate, and you assign a team to investigate that, and every day you blog about what you learned, uh, the sources you interviewed, put up original documents, and at the end of the week, you post your report, and maybe even throw um, kind of an open house for people to come and talk about that. Now, this That's would be, a fantastic idea. So this let me get this straight. This really would be cool. readers telling you what they want you to report on. Yes. Huh. Because it would be like a reality show on a blog on TV where the readers were the bosses. Right. Huh. Yeah. That I is think, an actually interesting idea. Well, I, I think that that's how it should be. The readers should be the bosses because they're the ones you're writing right. for, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, so, so in the if you have like the dig model, you have all these stories that are going out on the internet, and then you have people, you know, digging those stories or Reddit right. or you know whatever the model mm-hmm. is. Let's call it the dig model. Right. And 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 the most popular stories come up, you know, to the surface. So this is actually kind of the the directed the directed model where you're actually pointing to people and saying. We want you to do this story now. Would it be like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the most popular? Let's see, the the out of all our readers, the most popular subject that they want us to report on is this, and then right, and so you vote maybe, on a subject, and then you go do, or how would well, you how do you see that? Or would, maybe, it, would it be like an advice column kind of thing where you take whatever and was you written pick in one the you like, or no? The I think the way I, it would start is with a poll. Mm-hmm. So you set up uh-huh. five subjects, um, and then you have a place for readers to elaborate. Uh, they get to vote for one of the five, and then say, "I don't know the i five, the new i five bridge," mm-hmm. uh, and then they tell you exactly what it is they want to know about that, um, the, or city finances. Uh, is the city going to go bankrupt? whatever it might be, and then you sort of um, look at which topic is the most popular and what the comments tell you the gist of what they want to know is, Mm -hmm. and then you provide some sort of feedback loop and maybe ask them again. I don't know. I haven't worked out the details, but you pick out something that clearly the crowd is leading you to. and you limit the number of choices they can vote on, so it's not like 
Mm -hmm. a total chaotic situation. And then you investigate that topic and just refine the model as Mm -hmm. As you go along. That's a really solid idea. And I think it's a good idea because this is where you can get the public involved and the readership involved, but you still have a bit of control and, you know, this is where your background as a professional journalist kind of knowing how to write a good story and research things correctly and, you know, be ethical and all that will come into play. Right. As opposed to, you know just someone like me who you know hey i can write on a blog so here's my thoughts on it you know so that'll it'll be interesting aaron does write on a blog several in fact he does and his his uh ideas are uh pretty valuable so don't sell yourself short but there are those i i agree who just kind of spout off and and that's not what what i think people want sometimes there's just legitimate information that they want that the newspaper or the news organization isn't providing um and Hmm. this gives them a good platform to find out and they can even tell you if if you put a source list up there they say hey well you're missing so and so why don't you interview this person Mm -hmm. who really knows what's going on so I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. The first is your approach to really wanting to interact with readers and hear what the, what people are saying strikes me as one that's atypical for the average journalist. Mm. And I remember when I used mm-hmm. to work at the Village Voice back in the day and was getting reporters online, what I heard was, we don't want to read what people are saying. We have our own ideas of what they're, what they're thinking. We don't need to have our heads muddied up mm-hmm. by actually listening to what they have to say. <laughs> we don't need our heads muddied by information. And that seems to me to be very much the model uh, yeah. that most professionals follow. Why is that? And are there, in fact, people still at the Oregonian who think the way that you do and are actually going to stay with the paper? Um, you know, it's hard to get into people's heads. Yeah. Uh, the people... Newspapers have talked for decades about trying to serve the reader's needs. That's, in fact, that's all we talk about. The where we fail is we actually don't ask the readers. You know, we talk about it internally. We form committees. Uh, we, you know, brainstorm. Focus but nobody, groups. Exactly. <laughs> well, Can we I don't have even some go focus that far. Group. We, but nobody actually tries to go out and ask anybody well what would you like to know so that's but that's where so that's the that's the change that you see from print media to online media the medium itself has Mm -hmm. now changed the ability to do that i mean in a print medium in in the business model of print it it's difficult Mm -hmm. right because you have to have a committee meeting and a focus group and try to figure out it, with the immediacy of online media, that changes the landscape completely. And now you can actually sit down and say, hey, I can now do this. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I think it could be done with newspapers too easily, but in conjunction with a website where you gathered the mm-hmm. information to begin with about what people wanted. I mean, you've got now a mechanism with which you can communicate with people directly, and you don't have to rely on letters or emails um, and you can gather a lot of data quickly and you you could turn those stories around and print them in the paper or there are, one suggestion I've made is um, on certain stories that run day after day you you can probably remember stories where you go oh my god again you know again yeah. please stop uh, Britney Spears. <coughs> oh, who? Britney Spears. Oh, okay. Britney I thought you were Spears. talking about her sister, Jamie, who was alleged to be pregnant. I was just going to say, I don't, don't even know what not. her sister is. Um, she's not what? She's not pregnant. But that sells. That was big news. She well, wasn't actually pregnant? No. Oh, God. She, I can't no, she, believe you didn't know that. She was pregnant the first time. There was a rumor that she was pregnant again. <laughs> Quick, everybody, Wait, vote. Wait, did she have vote. a baby? We want more. She we want more on this, oh, don't okay. we? Okay. See, I don't really... The only time I read magazines that would report on that, typically, is when I'm getting my hair done. And now I've got my iPhone, and so I kind of just read emails and tweet when I get my hair done instead. I read it on the internet. That's right. 
I just don't look for that kind of stuff on the internet. But 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 the, the I think that's that's <laughs> part of the question here is now you're talking about again directing folks, but you have all this information. You have a lot of information out there, mm-hmm. and right now, um, what you see is the aggregator of that information. So you can right. again the dig model is people saying we want to see more of this. And they're aggregating what's out there now and right. putting it together. Or Google, front page of Google News, for yeah. example. You know, there's a thousand articles on this particular story. And then you can actually also filter that with your own filters as a reader. Right. I, I think what's happened uh, that newspapers haven't quite caught on to yet is that there used to be a scarcity of news that, that we would find it out. It wasn't just generally out there, but we would find it out, print it, and you would buy it because that's the only place you could mm-hmm. find it out. Now there's a surplus of news. In fact, there's so much that people are drowning, and they don't want to have to wade through 12 million different links to find the news they want. So I think now uh, news organizations, newspapers, have to be filters of news and um, you know people want you to edit and find out the best stuff Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't have to I think we can be a service in that regard and uh, actually curate I guess or or go out there and uh, for example if you want to if you're interested in the Iraq war not just print the latest AP story but say okay well if you're interested in the Iraq war here are all the best articles that are out there mm-hmm. on this given day, you know, read Seymour Hirsch in the New Yorker or or whatever, and just point those things out to them. So, yeah, that's one of the things, and um, you know, like with the Columbia News that came out. I mean, I've repeatedly made the point that it, looking at like you know local news specifically, you know, but the Columbian, Oregon, you know, Oregonian, Oregon Live. Um, you know, the local TV news websites and such is that the problem is that they want to be, you know, the professional media, but the quality isn't there quite often. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there was a, the SWAT team shot and killed a guy, you know, about a mile from my house Mm -hmm. in Clark County earlier this week. And 24 hours later, the article on KGW had the shooting like nine miles off of where it actually even happened. And so it's like, I get that you guys want to have this online presence, but, you know, the reality is I can find out better information from, you know, a random MySpace page probably than the professional media is putting together, you know. So that's kind of one of the big things that I see with local media is that, I mean, I would, you know, like when I canceled my subscription to the Clement, I was paying like, you know, 12 or $14 a month or something like that. I would How pay- long ago did you cancel your subscription? Uh, right before they started going bankrupt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it I, was you. It was you, the, the farewell. And the- it was, it was, it was your local Tuesday, paper. It was Tuesday, and then Wednesday they were talking about bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, it was about a year, year and a half ago, I think. And But I would pay 10 or $12 for access to, like, an accurate local online news source that had, you know, that... I mean, that doesn't seem like an unreasonable fee if they were doing that filtering and aggregation and the quality control so that I don't have to go read 10 different places to get the story put together. If there was somewhere that was bringing together those 10 places. Um, I don't know. I disagree. I disagree because I think everything on the Internet is free, and I think that's the model, and, um, and I just think that that's the model that's been built there. And yeah, I think it's if just, something on the internet it's really is paid hard. for, it's paid for by yeah, sponsorship. It's really hard to get wrestle money out of people um, when it comes to internet content. I mean, it's the, the, the holy grail. Except for porn. Except for porn. That's free too, though. Yeah, but some people will pay for the premium <laughs> porn sites. Yeah, well, they're not doing it right. But anyway, because <laughs> trust me, because they're not doing it the way the doctor normal says. For free. Um, um, That's why he's a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so he's a doctor of some doctor information. Of something we don't know what. Um, Betsy, did you have another question I for do. Steve? 
Steve, you know I have to ask this question. Uh oh. That's trouble. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that is but trouble. I know you have to ask it. Okay. Um, when I first got to Portland 11 years ago, I was actually here as Oregon Lives editor. Right. And one of the very interesting things I, I found when I got here is that we were not allowed to talk to people at the Oregonian. Mm-hmm. And Oregonian people weren't allowed to talk to us. Wow. And in fact, we were licensing the Oregonian's content and putting it up on live. And one of the challenges that I always had is that I really didn't think that it was my responsibility to um, take other people's words and take the responsibility and put it up online. And I really didn't like the, the division that was there. How have things changed in the last 11 years? And how do you think they're going to change in the next few years? Um, Are they going to break that model down? It's, well, it's changed a little bit or maybe shifted to the side. Um, <laughs> there, I mean, we do talk to Oregon Live a lot more than we used to, uh, which is, you know, not saying a whole lot, uh, but the it's centrally controlled, as you know. Yeah. It's run out of New Jersey by Advance Internet, uh, which also runs Cleveland.com and uh, sites in New Orleans and New Jersey, New right. NJ.com, yeah. Um, and they like to have consistent news sites across the board. So there's no, not much wiggle room for customization in a local okay. market. But uh, we have talked to them enough that we're building, I think, what we call impact pages, mm-hmm. which are uh, special pages that the Oregonian actually controls the content of. Yes, and they look much better and much more, you know, complete and much more robust and a lot they more are. interaction in right. the truest sense of the word. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't post comments on an actual Oregon Live hosted story. Mm-hmm. You have to go to our impact pages because uh, they actually use blogging software, which allows you to post comments. The a whole Oregon, lot of clicking through. Which doesn't actually work, the comments on there. Uh, often they don't. Yes. Yeah. Along uh, like search, we've already talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, um, yeah, the search function, apparently, I, I just learned today, um, they're actually uh, easier to find uh, stories on there if you use Google search. But the search function we use is there because they also pull up ads that are related whereas the google search function apparently doesn't so that's the reason they use the search even though the search actually doesn't work yeah. very well okay all right before we say good night i have one last non-newspaper related well vaguely non-newspaper related question okay you said earlier that when you graduated from college, you were actually concentrating on writing short stories and fiction. Mm-hmm. Did you give that up? Or is it something that you'd consider doing in the future? Or is it something that you've been doing on the sidelines and you know, secretly? And I don't know about it. No, I wish I'd been doing it secretly. You know, every, we're all supposed to have a, a novel in our desk drawer here in mm-hmm. newspapers. I don't. But uh, I would like to write actually some creative nonfiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just become so hardcore a journalist now. I just find truth stranger than fiction. That's yeah. what my creative writing professor actually said once: "Is truth is stranger than fiction. Write it, fiction." Yeah. Yeah. Well, this year, November, looking a little busy for you, but maybe next year you should consider doing NaNoWriMo. Yeah, my daughter and I actually are considering writing uh, a book called The Big Book of Men's Facial Hair, um, which <laughs> well, will be nonfiction. Will it go along with the, the video book? that you did? Coffee or the, table book. Was yes. it the, you know, photo, photo lapse video that you had on Facebook? Oh, yeah. I, I need to go back and finish that up. I, you do. I had, um, I had a beard for 29 years that I shaved off one day. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, scared the crap out of my kids because they'd never seen me without a beard. Um, but I started growing it back and my editor said, we ought to take a picture of your beard as it grows back. And uh, she tried to take a picture every day and it didn't quite work. So then mm-hmm. I started taking pictures and uh, I actually haven't for 
a month or more. So I, I need to go back and finish the job. Yes, there's uh, there's more facial hair than there was yes. at, at the end of the video. I yes. really like the photos with the burgundy beret, though. <laughs> those were especially nice. Yeah, yeah, you like that. I like yeah, those, too. Those were good. Yeah, I had to go out to a secondhand store especially to get that. Yeah, it was a good one. So, Steve, it's been great to have you. There's, it seems like we've scraped the service. I mean, we, there's so much more to It's talk been really about. fun. Yeah. No, actually, I've run out of things to say, so this is perfect. <laughs> Good timing. Well, then. you're going to come back uh, with your new venture. Uh, of, course. of course. Oh, yeah, when it's so, ready, come back thank and talk you. about I it. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll be interesting to see, uh, see how that plays out, see what sort of new media, new reporting and so what kind of trouble you get into how you mash up that the news is it yeah <laughs> well steve thank you so much for joining us you're welcome that's it aaron thank you for being a wonderful studio audience thank you thank you good night everybody good night everybody